a student of knowledge, or students of knowledge, طلاب العلم, how should they behave? If we are students of knowledge, and we are people of the sunnah, then our gatherings should be as such. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, keep our gatherings. لا قول علماء جنبوا مجالسنا. نعم. And كويس uh, نفهم قليل بس. نعم. نعم. And and the ulama, and this isn't my speech, but this is the statement of the ulama. They say that our gatherings should be free from the mention of that which stirs the desires of the private parts. And also, يعني, for example, the mention of women and uh, talking too much about dunya and food and mobiles and things like this. These, our gatherings should not be gatherings which are based upon this because our gatherings are the gatherings of the sunnah and the gatherings of a salafiyah. And if a person entered into the masjid and he saw and he listened from your gathering and all you're talking about is women and desires, he'll say, this is salafiyah, this is the sunnah. And the Sheikh mentioned that the gatherings of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, if a person was to enter upon the gathering, straight away would remind them of the akhirah. Because these were the gatherings of ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, always regarding the akhirah. There was no mention of the dunya in his lessons and his gatherings. And it was never heard from the gatherings of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah slandering or backbiting. So if a person is able to marry, then he should depend upon Allah and he should marry. But if a person is unable to marry, how should he behave? He should fast. And this was the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a person fasts if he's unable to get married, not that he continuously talks about marriage. And also that a person reduces the amount of food and drink he consumes, meaning half a meal in a day. And this is the guidance of the Sharia in terms of fasting and also in terms of reducing your food and drink so it doesn't stir or strengthen your desire and your, and your emotions. And then another piece of advice is that for those brothers who are not married, that abstain from your phones or have a phone which doesn't have these features. And also, even if you do possess such a phone, then those programs and those apps which you know are going to cause you problems, you should delete them. Not merely block them, but delete them. So maybe on WhatsApp, for example, if you know that there's a particular individual and he sends you certain messages which are not good, you can block that person. But you know that there are other apps which bring much afflictions and calamities and fitna for a person, you delete them from your phone. And you, should, and you should be completely confident that whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him that which is better than it. And also that a person makes dua. And also a person makes dua. And you say, Oh Allah, suffice me from that which you have made halal away from that which you have made haram. And O oh Allah, suffice, O oh Allah, uh, make my dependence and reliance upon you and do not leave me to my own self even for the blinking of an eye. And look at the example of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And when he feared the plot of the women and how he sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so he said, Oh my Lord, prison is more preferred to me than that which they call to. And this was Nabiullah Yusuf alayhi salam, and he preferred to be imprisoned than to be taken by the plots and the seductions of those women. Now, a person who is not married, he should not isolate himself from the rest of the people because this is one of the plots of a shaitan, isolating yourself and being alone and spending a lot of, the, a lot of time in the hammam. These are from the plots of a shaitan. And even opening your laptop or entering onto the sites in a place in which you are isolated from the people. Yeah. And also, stay away from the town centers and the marketplaces. And also staying away from these malls and supermarkets. Meaning a person should not go to those places where there is fitna. And he should also lower his gaze and control. And also he should accompany righteous people. Because no. if he is sitting with a righteous person, he will not look at that which is haram. But if he is with a sinner, then that sinner will encourage him to look at that which is haram. So there are some people who have problems within themselves in how they deal with the attractions or how they deal with the fitan around them. And sometimes they approach a person who is not affected by these fitan and they become a cause 
for him being tested by these fitan. And Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned that some people with the excuse of trying to forbid evil, they actually end up spreading evil. And how is this? That a person will say and he will detail that here Makan. at the back of the masjid there's a place. Laysa. So a person will mention and detail that in our town there's a particular place and everything that you desire you can find it there. A'udhu billah. And because of that person mentioning this place of evil in which everything is available, thinking that he's trying to remove the evil and forbid the evil, he has actually made this evil more prevalent and attracted people to it. If there is a place of evil like this, then how do you respond? You go to the relevant authorities, you go to the police, you go to the state, you inform them, you try to get that evil changed. As for mentioning it to every person, then per that person becomes aff affected by these places. And, and this was the advice of Sheikh Sam Taymiyyah rahimullah, that you should not speak about these matters. Yani, you should not broadcast these matters. So we mentioned that if there is a person who is able to get married, he should get married. And if there is a person who is not able to get married, then take these steps to protect yourself. So for example, come and frequent the masjid and remain in the masjid throughout the day. And also, don't go to sleep except that you're extremely tired such that as soon as you get into bed, you're going to fall asleep. A person prays Qiyam al-Layl and he supplicates to Allah. Or for example, a person runs and even if he runs 10 kilometers. But the problem nowadays is that a person, he intentionally does everything opposite to what we have advised. And then after this, he says, look at the fitna around us.